Hey, C Max here. We're going to do a review on a rifle. This is a Winchester Model 70. Uh, it's chambered in 7mm Remington Magnum. And this is one of my DOD guns. No, not Department of Defense. C Max, what the heck is a DOD gun? Wait for it. Dear old dad, um, was one of my father's guns. Uh, he used to sign stuff DOD, which was short for dear old dad. So this is a DOD gun. Uh, this gun was manufactured in 1968. Now the, the very sought after models of this are pre-1964. You may have heard of that before. And that's because they did a redesign in 64. They started making these in 1936 and they still make them today. So it's gone through a lot of evolutions and I'll kind of go over some of that um, as well. Now the seven millimeter Remington mag, uh, I've got some examples here. This cartridge here is a 308. This one is a 30 out six and this is the seven millimeter Remington Magnum. It shoots a Flatter trajectory than a 30 out 6 not a lot, but it is flatter. Uh, here's a chart, kind of shows the trajectory drop on them. I'm pretty traditional on most of my gun views and calibers. I don't really get into weird calibers. This is probably the most non-standard caliber that I have. It's still very common, very prevalent, uh, but of course, 30 out 6 to me is the daddy of them all. That's the most versatile. You can shoot much more heavier bullets. And the main difference between the 308 and the 30 out six is the weight of the bullet it can push. Now, the 30 out six and the 308 are virtually identical in the smaller grain bullets. And that's because of uh, improvements in powder and such. So obviously this one's smaller so you can carry more rounds and it's a military NATO round. But, you know, I, I don't go in for real crazy rounds. In fact, you know, all my calibers of all my guns, 22, short, long, long rifle magnum, 380, 9 millimeter, 38, 357, 40, 45, 12 gauge, 20 gauge. Uh, of course, I've got the 762 by 54, 762 by 39, the eight millimeter Mauser for my Mauser. Uh, the 545 by 39, which is the commie copy of the 223. And of course, I've got the 223, the 308, the 30 out 6. And this is the largest caliber I have, which is the Remington uh, 7 millimeter Magnum. Um, the main difference that they did in 64 is they changed the bolt. They did some other things, but the main difference is the bolt. Now, the original bolt kind of looks like a Mauser bolt. Here's a picture if you know what a Mauser bolt looks like. Now, the pre-64, uh, they called it a control round feed bolt. The post-64, like this one is, is a push feed bolt. That's the easy way to tell the difference in the bolts. However, in 1992, they started making the classic, and they went back to the control round feed. So they kind of went back to the pre-64 stuff. Confusing, yeah. But it's the older stuff that's really, really sought after. Now, some of the specs, it weighs about six to eight pounds. Uh, this one has the 24 inch barrel, but they were available in a 22 and a 26. Of course, it's got the iron sights, graduated rear sight, fixed front, post type. Um, and it came in virtually every caliber you can think of, anywhere from 22 Hornet all the way up to, what was it? Oh, I've got it written down here somewhere. Hold on one second. Oh, 470 Cap Stick, which I'm not familiar with at all, but if it's a 470 caliber, you know it's a monster. Now, they're very beautiful guns, as you can see. The newer models, the, the new classic, some of them actually have a detachable magazine where this one just has the um, floor plate and internal mag, as you can see there. Now, in 1968, which this model was, I've looked up the serial number, 
they did a modification to it and made the bolt smoother. Now, I don't know what the bolt was on the other, but I have to tell you, this is a very smooth action bolt, without a doubt. Um, I have not shot this gun. This was probably the last firearm my father purchased before his death. And um, I do have uh, another 7mm Remington mag in a Remington 700, which I'll do a review on it later. But I wanted to bring this out and show it. I needed to clean it up and put some oil on the wood and all that kind of good stuff. So I thought I'd do a review on it as well. Now, one kind of neat thing about it, if you can see right here, let me pull this up and we'll get out the old pointer. Right there, let's see, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little red tab out and as you, it indicates the position that the pin's in. So right now the firing pin is back, it's cocked, ready to go. And once you pull it, it disappears out of sight. So that's a, you know, a visual indicator on whether she's cocked or not. Here. Now safety's right here. Obviously, forward is fire, and the rear is on safe. And she won't fire and she won't let you open the bolt with it on fire. Get the bolt out, put the position of the safety in the middle, not forward, not rear. And then there's a button right here that you push down, open the action, just pull it straight out. Now the bolt's got the checkering on it. It's very nice. As you can see, it's just standard type bolt. Doesn't have the big side action of the Mauser. Now, the bolt kind of comes apart differently. There's a little tab right here that you can see right there. That you push in and then it just spins and comes apart. And that's about as far down is you need to break it down to clean it. You know, you can take the action out of the stock if you want to, but you only need to do that once in a blue moon. Very easy, very simple, very high quality weapon without a doubt. Now, one thing I did want to mention in uh, this weapon has been used as a sniper rifle. You know, if you're familiar with kind of the sniper stories, uh, they actually kind of went away after World War II pretty much and uh, came back for Vietnam and they didn't have any designated sniper rifles. So they were actually pulling stuff off of uh, the shelves according to One Shot, One Kill, which is uh, Carlos Hathcock's book. If you're not familiar with him, I highly recommend that you get his book, One Shot, One Kill, and read it. Even if you're not a big avid reader, I uh, don't think you'll be able to put it down and it's not super long. But Carlos Hathcock, in my opinion, is a true American hero without a doubt. And I think once you read it and realize, especially how we ended up getting injured and stuff, uh, you'll probably agree, but I'm not gonna really go into all that. But there is a real famous story about where he was actually hunting a sniper, a North Vietnamese sniper who was hunting him. And he ended up shooting the sniper through the scope and, and killed him actually killed her and the story goes uh it's been told kind of off and on different ways but he used a winchester 70. now at the time really they were mostly using uh remington 700s but according to what i've read this he used a uh model 70 pre-64 to do that uh, scope shot i was just telling you about uh, that was chambered in 30 out 6 so that's kind of cool as well great gun they're very expensive even these models are worth a lot but there's a lot to them so they're fancy and and whatnot now the Remington 700 i have is the one i shoot i don't shoot this one this one stays in the safe all right well that's going to about wrap it up for this if you have any questions Please email me, don't just post them in the comments. I uh, don't always get those right away, notifications and stuff is there. Sometimes it could be weeks or months, especially on some of my older videos. So thank you for watching. 
Always follow the safety. If you figure out the trigger, you're ready to fire. Always know where the muzzle's pointed. Every weapon's always loaded. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.